We are in Backup Exec 16, and I'm going to show you how to do a backup. We'll do a one-time backup in this particular video. And you see our server here called VM Host, and we see one-time backup. Go ahead and choose that option. And we'll get a wizard that comes up. And while we're waiting for the host to show all of its drives and test the credentials, we'll click Edit and we'll see that we can make some changes here such as we can choose to run now or at another time we can choose any storage device or we can pick the storage device that we want now, in this case we only have the one so any will work fine we can also choose how long to keep it for two weeks is the default we can raise that or lower it we can also compress it so we can get more data on there but the backup will take longer if we choose to do that we can also encrypt it if we want as well, and we'll talk about that in upcoming videos. And we can change the priority, just like changing the priority of any application, up or down. And we can choose the network interface in case you have more than one network interface. You can dedicate one for backup. Now, in previous versions, this did not always work. So we're not 100% sure that it works right in this particular one, but we'll certainly test it out. We can also set up notifications to let us know when the backup is done and if it was successful. We can verify the job. I tend to turn this off typically and then just run a test restore to see how that goes. The verification can take as long as the backup itself. We can also do instant GRT, makes backups faster by collecting minimum information, etc. And by default that is turned on. We can also have open files turned on, so that way we back up open files rather than skipping them. And we have advanced disk-based backup. We can turn that on if we want, but we don't have an advanced disk for this particular one. So we'll just go ahead and continue. And then there's pre and post commands in case we want to run any of those. Typically that's not necessary. And then we can also do various different things that you see here, such as backing up files and directories by following junction points, backup, follow, backup files and directories by following symbolic links. There's all different kinds of things. These have been here for years in Backup Exec, and the defaults are just fine the way they are. If you have any virtual machines, you can back those up as well. And if you have SQL like we do, we can back that up too. So the resources have been selected on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and click Edit. And let's choose not to backup H because that is our backup drive. That is one of the problems with backup exec. It will backup the backup drive unless you uncheck it. And let's go ahead and skip the E drive since that, that doesn't really have any data we need to be worried about. And we will uncheck the Hyper-V servers at this time. We'll do another Hyper-V video in upcoming. And we'll leave the system state, but we will uncheck SQL just so we get a faster backup. And we'll do the SQL backups in future videos as well. And we can also test the credentials just to make sure that we're not going to have any kind of problem with our backup based on username and password. Because when we set up Backup Exec the first time, it's supposed to give the rights to do the backup to a specific user. In our case, we chose the domain administrator. So we can see as it runs through its different tests, all the different successes so far. It's now testing the SQL server and that may or may not pass but we're not backing up SQL at this time anyway. Now all of the different areas that we'll be backing up have been tested. We can go ahead and click OK and know that we're not going to have any issues with permissions. Let's go ahead and click OK and sometimes you get an error when it's still actually checking to make sure it can back up everything and once that high level check is done, then we should be able to continue on. All right, the backups have now begun of all the different files we chose. And we can see now that the status is active. And if we double click on that, then we can get a little bit more information by expanding and looking at what's happening. So we can see how many bytes we're going to be running, the start time, and we can scroll to the right and see additional information such as if we set a schedule and how long our retention is in the priority. So it usually takes about a minute or two for the queue to finish preparing and then it'll switch to actually backing up files. 
If it takes longer than that, then there may be some sort of a problem where you may want to check the log files in order to see if there's a, an error of some kind that's keeping the backup from running. And now we can see the backup is actually backing up some data. And it's going to be a little while before it's done. So the top part is going to be how much data has been backed up. And the bottom part is the speed. And a decent speed would be oh, around 1,500 for USB 2, which is what this one is. And we're awfully close to that now. If you have an iSCSI running at at least one gigabit, you might be closer to two or 3,000. And then if you have a 10 gigabit connection, you might be closer to 5,000 or higher. We can now see that our backup was successful. It is complete. If we take a look at the job monitor, we can see at the bottom our successful backup as well. And if we wanted to restore from that, we could just go to Backup and Restore. And we would choose the option to restore from our backup. So let's click on Restore Backup Sets just to see our data. And we'll choose Files, Folders, or Volumes. And from a point in time, and we should see our data here. And there it is. So that's how we back up files and folders and servers in Veritas Backup Exec 16.